Well, hi, my name is Matt Kleskowski, and in this latest video, we're gonna take a look at really one of my favorite features inside of Lightroom and Photoshop's Camera Raw. That is the range masking feature, but we're gonna kind of take a little bit of a deeper dive into it, uh, see how it kind of works at the extremes, also see how it works on a few different examples. One last thing before we get going, and that is, if you don't have the range masking feature that I'm showing here, it only works in the Creative Cloud versions of Lightroom and Photoshop. So if you have an older version, you're not gonna see it. If you are subscribed to the Creative Cloud, then make sure you have the latest update as well. And you can always get that through the help menu. Just go to updates inside of Lightroom or Photoshop. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. And as we we dive into Lightroom, let's first take a look. I always I always like to do kind of a uh, an extreme example to demonstrate and then we'll get a little bit more refined. So what I'm gonna do, um, and by the way guys, just to let you know, this works inside of Photoshop when you open a raw file or if you come up here to the filter, uh, camera raw filter, you will, have your, uh, you will have your adjustment brush, your gradient and your radial filter. When you click on there and you scroll down, uh, you will see at the bottom here, you have all of your range masking options. So they work inside of Photoshop's camera raw as well, but we're gonna stick with Lightroom for this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my graduated filter, I'm gonna bring the exposure way down, and I'm gonna do something just crazy, crazy, ugly, obvious, just to help demonstrate. So I've drawn a gradient basically from bringing the exposure down on one side to not doing anything on the other side, okay? As we go down to the bottom of the panel, what you're gonna see is that a little, little option for range mask. And really when it comes to this tutorial, we're just gonna work with color and luminance. There is a depth option. Um, I always get the same question over and over on this one. How come it's not enabled? It's not enabled. It only works for very, very certain cell phone photos, okay? It's not gonna work for any of your photos from your DSLR. If there is one out there, I don't know what it is, but um, it's, it's, it's in its infancy stages. It'll be interesting to watch, but it's not really anything that you're gonna be uh, working with just yet. So we're, we're really strictly on color and luminance. So let's go over here to luminance. When you go down, you're gonna see that you have two sliders. You've got range and smoothness. So let's take a look at range first. Range is basically saying right now, I want you to apply this to all of the tones between black and white, all right? Black over here, white over here. Apply the whole thing to, to all the tones between there. If I start to bring this in, what I'm telling Lightroom or Photoshop to do is limit the places where you apply this to only the tones between the two sliders, okay? So now it's only getting applied to white to this kind of middle gray area, right? It's not getting applied to the really, really dark stuff. If I go to the reverse, watch what happens. I'm gonna now say only apply this to the tones between the two sliders. So now it's not getting applied to the really bright stuff, which was the sky. Now it's mostly only getting applied to that value of gray to whatever that, that black is, okay? To only the dark stuff in the photo. And obviously guys, you can go to the extremes one way or another and it's, it's gonna start to get wonky. You know, the more you bring this over, eventually it'll not mostly apply it to the photo. It's still doing a little bit here. Just like the more you bring this over, it's eventually not gonna do much to the photo. So I wouldn't recommend going to extremes with this. It's more of, it's supposed to be a subtle way to make changes to your photos that some of the original controls won't do, All right? So again, only being applied to the super bright stuff, hence the sky. That's why it doesn't, it doesn't really leave the sky when you look at it, right? If I turn it off and on, and then only being applied to the really dark stuff, which is why we don't see it in that sky there. You can also turn on that little checkbox here, the show the luminosity mask, uh, because what that's gonna do is it'll let you see where it's getting applied to, right? So right now it's only being applied to the pink areas in the photo. As I move that, you'll see that even disappear. Same thing on the other side, it only gets applied to the pink areas in the photo. And then we have smoothness, okay? Smoothness is just a way to feather the changes out. So if I said I wanted to do something like this, right? And then as I adjust that smoothness, you see it gets very blocky at zero and it gets very, very feathered and even starts to feather itself up to the sky as it gets higher, okay? All right, let's reset this, turn this off, hit reset. So why, what would I wanna really do in this photo? Well, in this photo, um, what I would want to do is take my exposure. This is a pretty common scenario. I'm going to take that graduated tool. I'm going to bring my exposure down. 
I want to darken the sky, but because of the range that our cameras see, and we all know our cameras don't see what we see, because of the range that our cameras see, a lot of times the darker parts of the sky actually look okay. What starts to happen is we start to lose a lot in the brighter parts of the sky. Okay, so we would never just want to go down here and just crank down on on highlights because that just gets ugly. Even if we did it selectively, it still gets kind of ugly and it still starts to apply to the whole sky. So what I would do is I would take my graduated filter, I'd bring that down, all right, give it a nice feather in between the the horizon line, and then again the the what we see a lot of is I always see skies that that. They needed to get darkened, but then they almost look too dark, all right? And you'll see here, it's darkening the darker parts of the sky, and it's also darkening this bright part of the sky. I kind of like what it's doing here. I don't like what it's doing up here, okay? I don't, I don't want the, the blue. I don't want the part of the sky that was close to well exposed to get really dark. So what we can do is we can then go down to range masking, I can go over here to luminance. And so think about what we said. Think about or you know the scenario. I don't want the darker stuff to get even darker. Okay. We have a graduated filter here. It's making things darker. I only really want to apply it to the bright stuff, which means I need to limit what's between these sliders to the bright stuff. So I would take the dark part, bring that over, and you will start to see it fade away from the darker part of the sky, and now it's just kind of limiting itself to that brighter part of the sky. If you want to watch it happen, go ahead and turn on that little option here, show luminosity mask, okay? And watch, watch the really bright red area that's at the top, all right? You'll start to see that go away, and it's still leaving me some pink in here. In fact, well, I might even move that down a little bit, and let's turn this off and just kind of make sure it looks okay. Right? So again, as I move this back, it's limiting itself from the darker parts of the photo. I don't even have to worry about it spilling over down here because it's limiting itself from there. And then you can go experiment a little bit with your smoothness setting and see which one kind of fits the photo. I think a pretty high smoothness setting here works pretty well. So if you look at it, we did indeed do something. That's before, that's after. We're just, we're limiting what it does to the photo so that the good parts, the, the parts that were already pretty close to well exposed aren't necessarily getting changed. And we're only changing the brighter part of the photo, which was down here by the sun. And so we would never want to like pull highlights back. We don't want that sun to become a hole. We want it to, to be a nice feathered type of a situation there. Okay. All right. All right. Next up, we have a quick word from our sponsor, which as always is me. Um, and I just want to, uh, as always, say thank you. Um, and also just remind you, you know, if, if you like these videos and, and you enjoy watching them and I help you out, the one thing that you could do back for me is just subscribe or follow. So wherever you happen to be watching this, whether it's on uh, YouTube, there's obviously a way to subscribe and you could go ahead and ring that bell. So that way I do about two a week. You're not going to get a lot of notifications from me, but that way you won't miss anything. And of course, if you're on Facebook, same thing goes. You can like the page and there's a way to turn on notifications as well. Now, let's take a look. Same example with a sky. We're just going to approach it a little bit differently. We're going to go to exposure. We're going to bring our exposure down. All right. Click and drag. So now I'm obviously starting to impact the mountains in the background there. Okay. Now, it, you, you almost... While we think sometimes we want to darken the sky, a lot of times when you just darken the sky, it looks fake. So a, a little bit of fade is not a bad thing, all right? I don't, I don't mind a little bit of darkening there to, to kind of mitigate the difference between that dark sky and the bright sky. But to me, this, this is too much. So we come down here, we turn on range masking, we can go to luminance. The problem is, is there's a lot of luminance values that, that kind of are similar between these two. Okay. So if I just go to luminance and if I just start to work with darker and brighter, I, I'm actually, if I turn on that mask, you'll actually see I'm actually kind of doing it to both areas. And I'm not saying that can't work. It actually could work in a lot of, a lot of cases. And I don't think it's, it's, I don't actually think it's that bad in this photo here. I think it does a nice job of still darkening the sky, but limiting what it's doing to the mountain range here. 
So that's one option that could still work. However, there's going to be times where you come across where it's not working. So instead of luminance, give color a try. Because in this case, our sky is blue. All right. And our mountains tend to have, they have a warmer pinkish type of a color to them. This is right at sunrise. So what I would do is go to color range masking. I would take that eyedropper. And what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to kind of lasso around the colors where you want to keep the adjustment, right? Remember our adjustment is something dark. We just darken something. You're going to lasso around the colors where you want to keep it. In our case, we want to keep it up here in these blue tones. If you look at that, it actually just went in there and it made a selection. And I know that selection actually looks fringy. If we zoomed in, that's actually just snow. That's actually snow on the very, very peaks of that, which it's limiting itself from. Um, it, the, it's not actually not a fringe that's around there, but it still looks kind of weird. But just to show you, turn that off. Take a look at the, the, the mask that it created. So it's creating that mask for us. Now, to me, it's still, it's not quite where we want it. That's why we have an amount slider. We can bring the amount slider down. It gets even worse. The amount that zero says, hey, just apply it to the colors I selected. Don't let it feather out too much from there. I'm pretty, I want it to be pretty strict. As we increase the amount, now you'll see that feathers out. And the more I go with it, you'll see the more it'll start to feather down into the mountain range as well. There's also, guys, it has nothing to do with range masking, but a lot of people miss this. There's also no harm in saying, you know what, I need to take control of this. Range masking's not working. Maybe it's getting me close. We have a brush associated with the grad filter and with the radial filter. It's not the same as this brush here. This brush here brushes things on and off. This brush here brushes the grad filter on or off. So I can click the brush. I can hold down Option or Alt to turn it into subtract mode. And I could go along here and I could start to paint it away manually where I'm basically just taking control of it. I'm using a large feathered brush which will help feather it toward the edges because remember I want the edges to, to blend in and be a little bit smoother. So you might have to use both of them. You might want to employ all of these techniques in one. All right. Okay, let's click on done there. Let's take a look at another scenario. So in this case, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna grab my radial filter and I wanna make this flower brighter, All right? So let's go ahead and click and drag around it. Um, I think I have it set to negative exposure, so we're gonna increase that. It's obviously gonna brighten everything that's inside of here. That's where range masking comes in, okay? Now, what do you wanna do this on? You know, in this case, it could go almost both ways. I think the flower is brighter than its background, so I actually think luminance worked pretty well. And what I do is I say, remember, I only want to apply it between a certain range of these sliders. So I don't want to apply it to the dark stuff. I only want to apply it to the bright stuff, which means I take the range from the left and move that over. And then experiment a little bit here with your amount slider. So it gets feathered. But this is pretty cool. Turn on the show luminosity mask. Uh, button here and you actually get to see what it's doing right right now it's applying it to all of this stuff I'm even going to make it a little bit bigger here right now it's applying it to all of this stuff as I bring this around watch how it restricts itself look at the mask that it's building right pretty cool stuff so again We'll kind of bring that over to just apply to the bright stuff. I think I want a pretty high smoothness setting. I want it to feather out. And then I don't think I needed it quite that bright. But now I have control over it. Now I have a better control over it. It's not perfect, but it's actually pretty darn good. I don't necessarily see any of the glow or the feathering that occurred inside there. I'll probably pull this back a little bit. Okay. Um, I'll hit reset there. You can always come over here, do the same thing we just did. All right, instead go a little bit brighter with it and then turn this on to color luminosity masking. Um, grab that little eyedropper, click and drag around there. Again, let's turn on our, uh, let's turn on our mask overlay. You know, not, a, not bad. It's a little hard to see because it's red on red, but just so you can see that was before, right? Now I'll take my, uh, I'll take my 
eyedropper and I'll lasso around all the reds. And you can see it instantly restrict itself to all of that area. And then you just move that amount slider based on how restrictive you want it to be with just that area. And of course, pull that back a little bit as well. Folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. These, uh, the, the brush tool, um, the radial filter and the graduated filter here are, are the most important tools for me inside of Lightroom or Photoshop. I'd gladly give up everything else if I could only keep these three tools. And the ability to do masking based on luminance and color uh, for, for those times where they just don't work perfect out of the boxes is, is invaluable. So I hope this video helped out. As I mentioned in the beginning, if uh, you wouldn't mind swinging by the uh, YouTube or Facebook page wherever you happen to be watching this and uh, subscribe or follow, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. I'll talk to you again real soon.